Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm Corey. We're from the band Trivium. And you're watching Fret12.com. The concept behind Vengeance Falls was to have a record that was completely cohesive. We didn't go into the record thinking we wanted to sound like A, B, C, or D. We didn't go into it thinking that we needed to fit any kind of parameters for people that would like or dislike the record. Basically the entire goal of the record was to make the kind of music we wanted to hear as metal fans. In turn, looking back at it in retrospect, we see that it's comprised of the best ingredients of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth Tribune records all within one. It captures everything we've ever done right as a band on one record. Uh, the uh, for the recording process, the only thing that was a, a bit different was uh, the approach to actually tracking it um, with with Draymond um, was a bit different. Usually, a lot of bands do. We've done it on the, all the other records. We start like you start with drums, record all the drums, and you do guitars, and you do like instrument at a time. And this this record, we split it up where we recorded half the record with drums, and then we would just record a song or two at a time and finish them. So we had complete songs early on, which gave um, the opportunity to for like a lot of different things for everyone's individual parts it gave us a lot more time to just focus on individual tracks instead of trying to do like a whole album's worth of guitar solos in like a couple days or a week or having to cram all the vocals at the end we got to like space everything out so everyone you know stayed engaged in the process and got to you know focus on a smaller amount of material at a time which really helped with the performances and the ideas to really you know come out you know even better with a more focus for us we found that there isn't exactly a formula to the way we write i mean even a second ago while you were setting up i think i was coming with a couple riffs for a song that we might have in the future so it's really whenever inspiration strikes i find that the worst time for us to write is during quote writing time if we force ourselves to write i find that creativity becomes stifled and it's best to embrace whatever comes to you whenever possible i think that the best time to be creative is when it happens sporadically or randomly yeah. um the way we did vengeance falls was it just so happened to be that we were on tour, that each of us were creating music individually, and then we all pieced it together as a band, and then started the pre-production phase with Draymond sending in his notes, and then pre-production together, and then the recording of the record. David was the most hands-on producer we've ever had. He's an incredibly amazing person, hilarious person. We found that the five of us all had the same sense of humor. We were always hanging out. If we weren't being incredibly pro professional, working diligently 12 hours a day, we were all laughing, goofing off, eating, or hanging out. It was an amazing time, amazing time. Well, we had, no we had known David for, for years, and, you know, obviously, both being in touring bands, we'd, you know, see each other on tour, play a festival or some something like that, and um, it really came together with the idea of working with him was on the uh, Mayhem Festival that we did with Disturbed in 2011, and um, the In Waves record was coming out at the very end of the tour, and before it came out, we gave a bunch of copies to you know friends of ours on the tour and people we wanted to like hey, check out a record. And you know, a couple of days later, after we gave the CD to David, he was, came up to us and you know talked about how much he loved the album, and then you know dropped a I think it was to Matt and Paulo or something, uh, you know just dropped a little little info about you know hey it'd be really cool to work together in the future. And once we you know started talking more in depth with him about that whole idea, it just kind of seemed like the perfect timing and the right you know the right the right I guess, match it was for great. a producer for the record. It was great to work with someone who's a singer, producer, who's in a touring band, a singer, songwriter. Um, we initially met him at this very venue, Chicago House of Blues, when we were opening for Danzig in 2005. And he came up to us and said, hey, I, I'm a fan now, you guys are great. And that's when we'd run into him once or so a year, something random, up until Mayhem. Amazingly, on this record, when I heard the initial amp tone of what Colin Richardson created during the mix, we were all blown away, first of all, and I was asking what amps, what cabs, what pedals those were, and it turns out that 
he used a Kemper profiler directly plugged into the board, which is something I could not believe. I'd never heard digital modeling done in the way that it could be used on a record. Before, I would never have used anything other than an amp on an album, but most people that we've told that it's a Kemper didn't know it was a Kemper until we told them it was. And what the Kemper profile was, it was a profile of an Andy Sneap rig that Colin Richardson had on his Kemper that he used for our record. So there's no cab, mic, or anything in our guitar tone of Vengeance Falls, which is really amazing. So we use the exact same tone live in our Kempers. No cabs, no stomp boxes, no we've been, mics. Uh, we've been doing the direct thing for a while. For years. Um, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, evolved over time with different gear. I know the, the whole the original concept of going direct, like we did back in like 2010, I think. Yeah, we got the idea from Meshuggah. We were watching them at Soundwave, and we are like, this is the best guitar song we've ever heard. And we well, looked at the rigs, and we're like, what the hell is that? And it was a fractal. Well, even before that, we were using the uh, our normal heads into a... Palmer. Palmer, like, amp simulator or cab simulator, whatever they call it. So we've been doing direct, and then eventually went from that to the Axe Effects, and then after this record, after hearing you know what Colin came up with with the the Kemper, um, we just knew we had to we had to get them. <laughs> All right, so we got the two wireless uh, signals from each guitarist, Corey and Matt, and I have both those signals going into the ABY box. So both of them, one goes into A, one goes into B, and then the input of the amp obviously is in and out in the ABY box. So uh, that way the guys can just roll their volume for when we do guitar changes. This is I'm doing both guitar changes at once. It uh, just makes my life a little easier. And uh, yeah, so I keep this behind me just so I can make sure that all the uh, signals are, well, all the packs are on and that all the signals are clear. And uh, yeah, and then they go into the Kemper. So, so here we got uh, the Kemper units that we use. This is Matt's, this is Corey's, and then above here we have backups that are legitimate carbon copies. They're just uh, complete copies of each other. So if I ever need to go to a, uh, you know, an oh shit moment and just uh, go to a backup, luckily it's all there, all the patches are the exact same. So I just have to uh, change up the input, the XLRs in the back, and the foot switches, and uh, be up and ready to roll hopefully as soon as possible. Um, I use the Epiphone MKH 6 and 7 string guitars. I actually just use those in 100% of the set now. EMG 81 in the bridge or 781, EMG 85 in the neck or 7, 707. Um, Dunlop 10 to 52 gauge strings for the 6, 10 to 63 gauge strings um, for the 7 string. So my signature with the Dunlop strap locks Dunlop strap into a wireless that goes directly into the Kemper. And that's it, the Kemper into the PA. Nice. Um, our wedges, we don't have wedges on stage, we just use in-ears, so it's one of the cleanest live sounds you can possibly have. There's no nonsense, no noise, and I've always felt that the least amount of stuff in between my fingers and the listener's ear, the better. Picks? Picks, I use the Jazz 3 Max Grip, okay. and we both use, what's that floor control we use? The Behringer. Behringer floor pedal with two, two expression pedals, one for volume, one for wah for me. Okay. What's your rig? I have my signature guitars, Kemper, yep. that's about it, wireless. What's your guitar? <laughs> I have a, a signature Jackson 6 what, and 7. What is it called? It's just my fucking guitar. That's what it's called, the, the Corey <laughs> My Fucking Guitar Bolo Signature just, Jackson. You know, Corey Willier Signature Jackson. I don't have any clever name for it or anything, it's just my guitar. <laughs> just, just look up, quote, my fucking guitar on any music site. So here we have uh, all the guitars that Trivium uses. Well, one's Matt's using one now, so it's missing. But we got two six strings, two seven strings, two six strings, two seven. Matt uses his Epiphone signature uh, Les Paul Custom. Can you show that one for us? Absolutely. This is, uh, excuse the smudges, I was just uh, line checking this. But um, yeah, it's just uh, all black. Les Paul Custom, MKH signature up here, and uh, yeah, it's quite nice. All these guitars are, uh, again, carving copies of each other, exact same, everything. And so then, you got uh, three of the same guitar, same look, same everything? Yeah, well actually there's a seven string right. that's missing. So these are two, which is uh, just uh, 
half step down, drop D, which would be C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. So that's what this is. And then this is the seven string version, the exact same guitar, except this is an A sharp standard. And uh, pretty clean other than, you know, your usual uh, gig rash. Now here we got Corey's The King V from Jackson, his signature model. And uh, this is seen a lot of road use for sure. And uh, again, this is just a drop C sharp, so C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp tuning. And uh, it's pretty hard to get this thing to fall out of tune. This is one of my favorite guitars I've ever toured with. We got a, as a backup to the six string, exact same one, it's just got a string through body. So no, uh, no tremolo, no Floyd. Right here we have the King V7 string version. Same thing, 7 string, A sharp standard tuning. Seymour Duncan blackouts. And uh, reverse headstock on this one. Pretty sharp rig. So that's it. Nice.